Silent Striders are one of the biggest pains in my undead balls that you could find. Often solitary, often nomadic, often very hard to pin down, more slippery than a chthonic entity. The Silent Striders are enough to drive me to frenzy more nights than most, and many Many other Pentex executives wonder why they trouble me so. Well, they get in places that a werewolf should not. Some question whether the Silent Striders even are werewolves. They seem to share more in common with jackals. Certainly I have seen some that look like Anubis of ancient Greek myth. And speaking of that, their greatest enemy are the followers of Set also of ancient Greek myth, but alas, still extant in these nights. I mentioned the followers I've said to you before. Allow me to paint for you a little history between the Silent Striders and the Setites. At least as I understand it. Silent Striders, ancient home or ancient territory, was in Egypt and northern Africa, a cradle of the earth area, you know. Now, the followers of Set, their ancient homeland, was in the same place. Their founder, the followers of Set, their antediluvian, their progenitor, Set, or Sutek, or Typhon, whatever, practiced some great ritual that allowed him to consume the spirits, or at the very least bind them, of all Silent Striders that died, and bar entry to all Silent Striders from entering Egypt. I do not know the full consequences, I was not around at the time, but I do know that there was a great war between Silent Striders and followers of Seth, and the Silent Striders happened to lose. They were separated, they became a nation without a nation, a people without a home, men without flags, werewolves without territory. They were what are today the Kurds, I suppose, you know, millions of them, not a place on the UN. Silent Striders, they travel here and there, all of them mostly solitary creatures, not a place to call their home. Oh, and how they would love to reclaim Egypt. Well, they would love to reclaim it, but the Setites have got their fangs, their claws, and their whatever the hell else it is they plunge into things, buried deeply in Cairo and the surrounding environs. I do not think the Silent Striders are going to be going back there anytime soon. So why do they bother me? Well, because if they were concentrating on Egypt, they wouldn't be concentrating on us. The Silent Striders moping and complaining about their lot in life for the last few millennia. No exaggeration. They believe they have every entitlement to reclaim their homeland. I say allow them to do that, allow them to try and smash themselves against the set-eyed walls in the doing, but no. Finally, they're beginning to get the idea. Egypt isn't all it's cracked out to be. Perhaps we should stop labouring on our loss of ancestor spirits and start focusing on the present and the future. Where does that take them? Other North African countries, other Sub-Saharan African countries, other Third World nations. Why not spread some of their mythology, some of their goodwill, some of their nomadic and healing abilities? to kinfolk that they have not been in touch with for a very long time. The Silent Striders have a firm bond when it comes to the tribes with other changing breeds. Certainly I have heard of Silent Striders that make common cause with some Bastet. Uh, they are changing cats. Korax, other travellers, Ajaba. The Silent Striders, through their nomadic nature, are not seen as threatening 
in the same way as other tribes. They are not likely to just settle down and take territory from someone. Rather, they will lend assistance and then move on. So for that regard, they're seen as mercenaries. And the worst thing is, they are well informed. Because they're constantly travelling back and forth, they have a fantastic information network. There are a lot of silent striders that pledge themselves to the Raven Totem as a result, although, in fairness, that is not their... Not their typical totem, not to my knowledge, at any rate. In that regard, I cannot say what their totem is. Huh. See, and this is the issue. We know an awful lot about Silent Striders past, but we do not know a great deal about what they intend to do now. Are they a tribe with any unity? Difficult to say when they're spread so thinly. Are they a tribe that poses a threat to Pentex? Absolutely. Because in all of those third world shitholes where they lend assistance, it's us who are operating. It's us they come into conflict with. It's us they bring down. Oh, and how they do it. Because all that pent up frustration they've got for the Setites, they're let out on the next bunch of manipulators, users and bastards, which often happens to be an Endron drilling station or something like that. A pack of werewolves is easier to track than a solitary one. A werewolf that can make friends with other Ferra is a danger, especially in some of the areas in which we like to operate with very little fuss, with very little difficulty. You know, when the Silent Strider starts telling the were-rats and were-spiders and whatever the hell else lives down there, Oh, that factory over there, that actually serves the worm. Didn't you know? Oh, you haven't known for the last 100 years. Well, well, I'll give you that one for free. Now I'll move on. Now we're going to have to deal with a whole bunch of other enemies. And I part wonder whether the Silent Striders even intend to do the harm that they do. Certainly, the rest of the Garo Nation doesn't have a great deal of trust for them. Wolves are not supposed to move around constantly. What are they, gypsies? No. They're supposed to claim territory, they're supposed to protect it, they're supposed to forge cairns and defend it until the end of Gaia. No, 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 no. Silent Striders do not do that. And so the Gara Nation isn't terribly sure what to do with them. To be honest, if the Gara Nation decided to impart some kind of edict on the Silent Striders, then that would be doing us a favour. Because the Silent Striders would have direction, we would be able to identify it, and we would be able to combat it. But for as long as they are happy to do whatever the hell they want, some of them join packs, surely, but very few of them join packs comprised of their own number, for they're so flighty. We struggle to anticipate what the Silent Striders want, or what they will do, who they will target, what they will destroy in the name of Gaia, in the name of Egypt, in the name of whatever else they decide to pledge to at any given time. You can often recognise them as the one black man in a society of whites. Uh, they're not afraid of standing out like a sore thumb. Perhaps that is the one advantage we do have with them. With, in America especially, our... Hmm predisposition for hiring the lowest common denominator and, shall we say, cutting out the immigrant angle, which is something that Mollet is going to have to change, we can often see when there's a silent strider intruding. You know, because all of their descendants are, of course, ancient Egyptians, and the majority of them are of the same ethnicity, shall we say. Well, not all. Silent Striders are known to adopt. That's a painful thing. Because they're transient, as I pointed out. They'll go around with baby strapped to back like some damn samurai, waiting for it to grow up, and teaching it as kinfolk, teaching it more about the Garo Nation than perhaps any other tribe would seek to do to kinfolk, dropping it off, allowing that kinfolk to spread the good word elsewhere about Gaia. Sometimes these... Werewolves will go around and 
Lucky for them that Kinfolk will grow up to be a werewolf in his own right. Well, great, then we've got more problems. The one advantage we have in that regard is, because they're so transient, they aren't often one for stable families. If a silent strider gets a woman pregnant, or um, gets fucked up by a man, she's, or he's, more likely to deposit the baby somewhere else than take it around with them constantly. After all, it interferes with one's travel time if you have to cater for a child. So that's why they're dotted around all over the place. Their parental instinct is terrible. Uh, I believe it is slightly different for the lupus among them, but their homids, well, never seen a tribe make so many single mothers and fathers. I believe they take great pride in it. Survival of the fittest, the get of Fenris would approve, I'm sure. But how to combat them? Hmm. No easy way. How do you combat a spore that spreads so thinly? <laughs> All we can do is shore up our defences. All we can do is keep our eye out for that ace of spades in the deck. All we can really do is get the setites on side. Yes, I personally, have very little time for the serpents. You see, the Setites, their belief system does not quite gel with mine, or rather that of my sect, which is of no concern of yours, and so the likelihood of my befriending a Setite is pretty infinitesimally small. However, there are others within Pentex that probably could do so. If we start exchanging information with the Setites, they will start exchanging information with us. Now, we don't really care for their information, except that they like to watch these silent striders as well, because they feel just as threatened by them as we do. Perhaps we could start an exchange as long as one of us didn't try and take advantage of the other, and the Setites, without knowing it, are probably the greatest servants of the worm among uh, Canite culture. They could do great things for Pentec. If we can get a few Setites into high up positions in this company, I don't want to deal with them. But if we could, we could have a very real vanguard against the Silent Striders. Maybe they could bring some of their Setite sorcery along with them, and we could barricade our own doors from Silent Strider incursion. Perhaps that's just a pipe dream. They are not so unusual that we can turn the rest of the Garry Nation against them. That is not their weakness. The greatest weakness, which is also the greatest strength, is their solitary nature. If we find out where a Silent Strider is, we don't wait. We fuck it up. We kill it. If we find out where it's deposited a baby, we take that baby. And we give it over to the Black Spiral Dancers, because they're always in need of kinfolk, or more, among their ranks. It's a time-consuming, costly process, following one Silent Strider and watching its breeding patterns, but the Silent Strider cares so little for its offspring that it is practically giving the Black Spirals ranks and ranks. We wait until it's out of sight, snatch the baby from the crib, take it to the nearest hive. Ultimately, if we follow that course and we follow it well and pour all the resources into it that we have to to make sure it succeeds, the Silent Striders should be done as a threat within a generation or two. I intend to be around to see that night.